Are you thinking about being an RV owner? Want to see our beautiful country? Want to be part of the RV lifestyle? Do you want to learn more? Are you missing freedom? Do you want to travel? Do you want to explore? Then join us at RV Talk Radio. Proudly sponsored by RV Lock. Hello RV Travel Buddies and this is Rob and welcome to RV Talk Radio. We're really happy to have you and just want to remind everybody our contest for an RV lock is still going and you have till November 11th uh, this coming Wednesday to enter for a free RV lock kit with an extra remote. Just a reminder also to enter the contest, all you have to do is go to Facebook. Just go to the search area and type in RV Talk Radio and join our RV Talk Radio group community. And you, you'll have to ask to join. Uh, once we accept you, get in there and just say, I would like to enter myself for the free RV lock. And that's all you have to do. And what we'll do is we take a list of all the people that are in the uh, new group. And we're going to use a random number number generator like we did on the month before. And pick out our winner and send that right out to you. I would also like to invite you to contact us. And there's several ways to do it. Uh, you can email me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. Or actually go to rvradio.com and go to the contact page and you can contact us there and tell us all about you and last but not least you can always go to RV Travel Buddy and you can actually submit articles or just uh, contact us there and uh, what we want to know is just uh, what you're up to and what kind of things you're doing and tell us about your RV and tell us about your travels if you happen to have an RV product or service and you're interested in advertising or at least uh, being interviewed by RV Talk Radio, just contact us. Uh, we've had a couple folks contact us already, and uh, they've been on the show. So don't hesitate. Don't be shy. Um, just get your keypad going and contact us. We'll, we'll get going on this. I did get an email just the other day uh, from our videos and we've been telling people we've been installing LED lights in our fifth wheel. So, <laughs> one thing I've been telling you is it is expensive to do. So, the plan was, is we're only changing out the lights we think we would be using when we're boondocking. So, we started with the kitchen and some of the side lights that are in the living room. And that was great. And then the next thing we moved to was the bathroom. Uh, Sherry, you know, uses a lot of lights there when she's doing her hair and stuff like that. So, and it's, you know, that room gets on, turned on, off and on uh, quite a bit. And then the last place I need to go to and finish up on is the bedroom area. And it has been kind of expensive. We have been buying our LEDs from Camping World. I have has kind of hesitate to order from other companies only because I'm I'm worried about quality. My first set of lights I bought from Camping World, I can't remember what brand they are, but they've been durable and strong and working well, and I just don't want to rock the boat. I'm interested in conserving my batteries, and uh, it just doesn't bother me to spend a little extra. If I was trying to save a few um, dollars... Yes, definitely do some shopping. I hear you can get LEDs off of eBay and buy them directly from some of the companies and they seem to have a little better prices. The main, the main question that I get from people is, did I have to change my fixtures out? And the answer to that is absolutely not. Uh, we have a 2013 Montana. I'm using all the original fixtures. The only difference is I... I'm, you got to pay attention to what kind of socket you have. So depending on what year you have and what model you have, they 
have different types of sockets. And once you identify what those sockets are, that's the LED you want. Uh, the other thing I had to decide is whether I wanted bright light or softer light. And I did a little more softer light in the bathroom area and bright lights above the mirror area in the, in the bathroom. And that seemed to be pretty nice. But uh, yeah, I didn't have to change any fixtures at all. Uh, I've heard some people changing out their fixtures and it's like, I'm not sure why. Uh, some people are adding brand new lights totally so they can keep the old lights and then just run the LED when they're boondocking. Uh, whatever works, uh, but I can tell you I didn't have to change any of our fixtures at all. Other listeners that have contacted us have actually asked to be uh, interviewed, <clears throat> and we think that's great. Um, <coughs> for example, our V or TV, uh, he contacted us. Within a week, we had an interview set up, and it went really well. So I urge you, if you'd like to, uh, be on our show. If you uh, have a website that you want to talk about, or your travels, or a product or service that's RV related, we'll be happy to have you on the show. Another thing I really get a kick out of is a lot of folks that watch videos, whether it's our videos or other folks that are doing regular videos or shows, everybody kind of thinks that everything's perfect all the time. And so I'm going to share a little story that we're going through, and I don't know how we're going to resolve it yet. But you know, like I said, we have a 2013 Montana, and we have a Norco refrigerator. And out of the blue, it's not holding temperature. So uh, I don't want, I don't believe, I don't want to believe that I just need a replacement. It seems like a cop-out. So, I'm, you know, I get on the Internet, and I've been doing a lot of homework. And once again, there's a lot of great websites out there for RV tips. And so one of the biggest things I've been hearing is making sure you're level. I've never had trouble with that before, and we have automatic levelers. But So I went out and actually bought... We have, we have a typical leveler that's a little round leveler with a little uh, bubble in the center. And I, I was told on the Internet that's the worst thing to use. They say getting a straight edge type of uh, leveler is what you want. So I ran out, and then they say to see if you're truly level, level your RV to your refrigerator, not the RV itself. And when you do that, use the shelf in the freezer area because that's the it's got a metal surface below that, and that's the best way to see if the refrigerator is level. So I did that, and, and yeah, we're and if with the bigger refrigerators, they're saying that you shouldn't be off more than two percent. So I kind of think we're a little more than two percent off from side to side. So I went out there and kicked us up a little bit, and I think I got it. And so now I'm going to see if the if I have any um, success with this refrigerator. But I didn't stop there. Uh, they also suggest that you. Uh, um, go through the procedure and there was a procedure that I went through to open up where the burner is and blow that out and get all the uh, uh, remnants out of there from um, when the burner is running. And we don't use the burner part that often. We usually use electricity. But I still took it apart and blew it out, got as much dust and dirt out of there and away from the pilot. And of course I shut the power off and I shut the gas off while I did this. And they also say that your uh, thermostat, which is, uh, if you look in your refrigerator up by the coils, you should see a wire coming off, usually from your light, it goes down to the coils and clips onto it, and that helps determine how long your refrigerator runs uh, through its settings. And so they say also th to eliminate whether your controller is bad, uh, to unplug that, which your light will go off, which mine did. <clears throat> and so right now I've got all of those things in work, and now I've got to kind of wait a few hours and see if I've actually had any success. Because the last thing I want to do, and, and if you're a full-timer, you know what I'm talking about, we're working, and to, in order for us to use our warranty, which we have through Good Sam, we would have to go up to Camping World, 
get it diagnosed there might be a slight chance they have to order a part and we're talking about a lot of hassle and, and in order to pull some of this off I know we'd have to take time off so I'm trying to eliminate as many dumb issues that it could be before I have to break down and go up the camping world and and start shelling out some dough <clears throat> uh, first of all if you have a mobile RV group come in they don't recognize the Sam's Club warranty that we have so that was that's not a good idea and the minimum is like hundred and twenty five dollars an hour and and they refuse to work on RVs but they'll diagnose them so just to have them come in and in a minimum of two hours they say I'm gonna be dropping probably a good two fifty three hundred dollars just to have someone come in and test all this stuff so all I can say is I recommend that when you have an issue with your RV do a little studying. There's a lot of great information on the internet about all different products on RVs, and I didn't have any trouble finding some good RV tips about how to deal with a refrigerator that's not holding its temperature. So I'm hoping that one of the three to five ideas that they said will work, and if not, then I'll have to, you know, go through the other route but anyway we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you informed so today on my main subject I think I'm gonna be deep <laughs> spiritual of anything and I want to talk about RV wealth and I I'm, I'll be all over the place with this but lately I've been discussing Discovering new feelings about full-time RVing and, and what and reason I'm starting to feel this is I watch a lot of videos just like all you folks do and I watch some people that are full-timing every day they're putting out a video every other day they seem to and they capture great stuff um, Typically, most of them have been single, but uh, some of them have partners. And, I mean, they're not living high in a hog or anything, but they're, they're doing some great photography and going all over the place, and they seem loose and happy uh, happy and, and, and enjoying the RV freedom. And then there's others that look like they must have, you know, pretty good dough, and they got some pretty nice stuff, and... And they're doing videos and, and stuff and, and they are working and, and they're just doing what they want to do and then I do know there's just hundreds if not thousands that we're not seeing videos on at all and that's not unusual I've told people before and I think just incredible said it too for every hundred people or a hundred RVers out there maybe maybe one of them is doing videos or keeping up a blog and it may be not even that it could be every thousand so what you're hearing hearing from the internet is not real life real life if, if you want to know real life with RV full-time living just go to an RV park and start meeting people and you'll realize most of them <laughs> like us is like oh I never heard of these people I've never heard of RV Travel Buddy, I haven't heard Just Incredible, I haven't heard of Nomadic Fanatic, I haven't heard of uh, Gone with the Winds, they don't know what I'm talking about, or, or, or even RV Talk Radio. <laughs> um, they're just RVing, and, and they're having a great time, and that's great. But to get back to the subject of wealth, I'm not even sure how I want to define this subject of wealth. But when I watch these people making these videos and, and doing these documentations and, and blogs and selling products, I am so absolutely jealous. Not so much of them as a personal person, but is they've got a wealth that I don't. And Sherry and I are, are working, so we make pretty good money so a lot of folks would say you're well to do and that's great 
<clears throat> Sherry and I go through our routine every day and we go to work and we make really good money and we can buy pretty much anything we really want. Uh, not a problem. And that's not bragging. It's just a normal lifestyle. The only difference is we don't have a house anymore. We're living out of RV because we're getting ready to be retired and and start do a little travel. And so my envy is not other people's money. What my envy is, and I think it's a lot of people feel that way because I, I know a lot of these people that do videos talk about trolls and they say, well, they're getting, you know, you don't have real jobs or anything like that. But that's not what people are upset about. I think most people, especially trolls, are jealous about time. Yep, time. I think wealth is happiness, of course, but I'm starting to think that wealth is time. And when I say that is, everybody has things they like to do. Hobbies, if you want to call them hobbies, whether it's photography, whether it's reading, whether it's making videos or traveling. In order to do any of those and be happy, you have to have time. And, and Sherry and I are just totally frustrated because we love photography, but we don't have time to travel and get the places where we can go do the photography we want to do. We want to make more videos. And we can pump one out over the weekend, but I can't, we just can't get a, a video out every other day or once a day. It's, it's impossible. You know, we get home at three in the afternoon. Sherry gets home later than that. We try to get dinner down and, you know, we have Cinder and our pets and they need to go for walks and we got to make dinner and, and, uh, we just do our best to squeeze in getting uh, videos done. And at best, we're always struggling to try to get a show out weekly just for RV Talk Radio. And and, and, and we love it. Absolutely. That's the most favorite thing that we want to do. Sherry loves photography. Sherry loves to read. I love photography and video. I love to talk to people. But... In order to get interviews done and do all things, I don't have enough time in the day to do what I want to do. I would think, and if I can remember, that when we do retire, we won't have as much money. And I've got to realize, and other people should realize, that wealth isn't just about money. And I know you've heard that before, but I'm kind of trying to define it out more. Is I think people need to realize that wealth is getting more time to enjoy the things you really want to do and dreamed of doing. Whether it's just more quiet time or, or reading or, or maybe you make quilts. Maybe you like to sell things. Maybe you want to start a little business. Some people may like maybe make soap or something or or food or you want to start blogging more. Um, it really comes down to having enough time to develop those interests, those hobbies. I, and I, I think others would feel the same way, is that's the dream. That's the freedom that's wealth the hard part is trying to balance it of course you've got to make money now the ideal thing would be doing your passion doing your hobby or doing your craft and being able to make money from it to sustain this RV freedom now this isn't always applicable to people that are retired, but it's going to be more and more because the f people that, that are coming up now that are going to retire may not have pensions like a lot of us will have. <clears throat> and uh, you better hope that maybe they did something good with a 401ks. And then getting your Social Security, you can't even consider that till you're in um, 
60, I believe it's 62. And if you take it that early, you take a, a you get a penalty. So it's going to get harder and harder to get that pension and that Social Security. And Lord knows what your health is going to do. It's different for everybody. You know, say, oh, yeah, um, you know, I'll be healthy and be able to do what I want in my 60s. Well, will you? For sure? Um, how many people do we know are having heart attacks and problems in their 50s? Or sooner? So, I guess what I just wanted to talk about, and I love to hear stories and articles of your perception of the word wealth, and especially how the word wealth and RV living blend together. How do you balance? What is the balance? How, for every action is a reaction. And to choose RV freedom is a give and take. You probably will not be making as much money. You won't have all the finer things in life, but I mean, it, but at the same time, you'll be outside more. You'll be able to exercise your hobbies more, regulate your income, learn how to stretch a dollar. And I don't care if you even well to do. Once you retire, you just may not have the money you had when you're working nine to five. We all are going to make that choice. Some people, it's going to be hard and some it will be really easy. Another big factor is your health. I'm sorry, but I've noticed as soon as I turned 50, I swear if you compared it to a car, it's like the check engine light came on. And every time I think I'm going to get that check engine light off, something new comes up so starting to feel age and lord knows what it's going to be like when i'm i'm in my 50s 60s and 70s are, are going to probably have it's their different issues too so what is wealth i'm asking you what do you think out wealth is i think a big part of wealth is time the time that's being taken away from you to live that nine to five that we all did to, to keep our house, to raise our children, to do all the things that we did in life. <clears throat> we had to give up time to do that. And that's admirable. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But we only get one shot at this life. And can you honestly say that you got to chase some of your freedoms? Um, some people may know I've also made some videos called Imagine 180. And one of the things I talk about and start the show out about is walking around a cemetery. And it starts out, is, and you're walking in the cemetery and you look at all these people who passed away throughout the years. And you ask yourself, how many people, how many dreams were never dreamed? How many trips were never taken? How many songs were never sung? All those people have passed away. How many of them never really chased some of their dreams? And I, I'm hoping I'm not going to be one of those. And I'm really hoping you're not going to be one of those people. But I do know that to get something, you have to give up things. You just, but it may not actually be giving up. It's just modifying. When you get older, I think uh, some things just aren't as important anymore. Keeping up with the Joneses, that that was something we did in the t when we were twenty and thirty years old. <clears throat> By the time you get our age, it's like I don't want to play that game anymore. It really comes down to being comfortable, being loved, being around friends. Uh, the big thing I would say is enjoying the United States. Just being an Amer uh, American, the things we have in our country you haven't seen yet. If you just have been in one state, you have no clue what the United States is like. You could spend a lifetime just cruising the United States and constantly find new things. And then you could go back to old things and they'd be new again. And Lord knows, 
if you get a chance to go up to uh, Canada, there's a beautiful place to go. And that would be endless too. So <laughs> I guess this is the part where I say, folks, contact us. Tell us your stories. Tell us your dreams. Tell us your solutions. Tell us your plans. Give us your definition of what wealth is. Wealth, freedom. Um, I'm not talking about just money. We know we have to have money. And those folks that we may give a hard time to or maybe even be angry with when we watch them on doing videos, are we really angry with them or we go, oh, they, those people need to get a real job? I don't think that's the issue. I think we're jealous of the time that they have doing their passion. So maybe I get a little deep on that a little bit, but it's, it's been something in my back of my mind I just want to put out there and I'd love to hear it from you guys too. So another subject I wanted to tell you folks about is uh, talking about Cinder. Now, I don't talk about pets enough, and, and I know you guys see us have fun with Cinder, and we have the Cinder stuffed animal. And once again, if you do uh, pick up a Cinder stuffed animal, please make sure you, you take your Cinder and, and put them in some of your pictures and, and put them in our Facebook and post them to our RV Talk Radio uh community which is having a little fun and it helps us <laughs> pay our bills anyway so some of the uh, we haven't really followed up but let you know that you know cinder's our chocolate lab and we had her kennel trained and she went to school too we had her, uh, we got a good training and we went to school and learned how to get her under control and how to use a leash and all the things and we kennel trained her because we lived in an apartment at the time. And so we had to kind of teach her that uh, in the morning we we get all dressed up and we, we have to leave and we give her a little treat and we put her in her kennel. And, and at first we shut the door. And then when she kind of got that routine down, we opened the door and then pretty soon she discovered she, she could leave the door and go out in the living room. And pretty soon, and we, we actually put a webcam in our apartment to monitor her. And she's done wonderful. Well, then he's like, all right, we're going to move into the RV. Well, whenever the weekend came, we used our RV as a vacation home. So we get there and it's like, woohoo, we're going on vacation and we're going up to the RV and the weekend was playtime. So we were kind of worried about moving into our RV full time and putting Cinder in there because at first they, she would probably think it's the weekend all the time so if you look at some of our videos when it, we talk about first starting our full timing you'll see we put in a very large kennel which took up a lot of room and we kind of started over a little bit to teach her that this is now your home and we have the same routine you're just in the trailer now well we had you know we had that kennel up for about a week and a half or two and, but we never shut the door in that. So, and we did use a webcam a little bit. But uh, anyway, she, I was amazed at how quickly she adapted to it. And she's doing great. Uh, the kennel is gone. There is absolutely no kennel in this RV anymore. And Cinder does great. Um, the only problem is, I think, is she, uh, she thinks the couch is hers when we're gone. And you know, we love her a lot, and she is part of our family, and we just don't make that big a deal about it, and she's not hurting anything. We're very fortunate. Cinder's not a chewer. I mean, she was, but she seems to know when what things she should chew up. With the exception of choosing, uh, got a hold of my Seahawks new stocking hat and chewed off the tassel off the top. and She didn't hurt the hat, just didn't like the tassel, I guess. But So if you see me or Sherry wearing our... Uh, Seahawks number 12 stocking cap you'll notice there's no tassel at the top that was the work of cinder so anyway so if people have asked 
Uh, the other thing is we're very fortunate. Cinder's not a, a pig <laughs> when it comes to food. She does like people food, there's no doubt. But as far as dry food, she's a nibbler. And so if people want to know how we feed Cinder, um, we actually give her uh, at 4 o'clock every day, and she doesn't forget 4 o'clock. She gets a can of, uh, of, of the pre, um, Prina, I think it's Prina, um, wet dog food, uh, chunky style type, uh, once a day. And she has dry food available to her all day, but she only nibbles on that. Uh, so she, we'll, and most we ever put out is a cup of dry food for the nibble on. When we get home, she always gets a, a busy bone or something to, um, to kind of like, oh, this is a special time and something to kind of uh, fill her tummy. And she does have an obsession with peanut butter. So she does have a special bone um, that we put peanut butter in at, uh, at certain times of the evening when she's getting a little antsy. And boy, I tell you, she can get focused on uh, on peanut butter. So, so Cinder really likes peanut butter right away. So, um, we've I think we've done a good job of keeping Cinder healthy. Uh, she's still eating well. She's handling RV life really well. She's really tuned in to the sounds. Uh, she uh, when my truck comes up and she can hear the diesel, she knows it's me. Um, she's pretty good at letting us know if she hears a sound that isn't right and uh, we're really proud of her so she's now three years old and becoming a, a great dog and we try to do a walk every day uh, she's never had an accident in the RV uh, when she was younger she had a couple at the apartment but she was growing up and learning how to deal with that uh, we've also making sure that we don't give her any unusual foods and then when we are out and about, we have to be careful that, you know, dogs will eat anything. So um, we try not, to, you know, around ducks or something, you know, dogs are famous for going after the droppings and getting into things they shouldn't. And, of course, they get upset stomach afterwards. So anyway, that's kind of an update on Cinder and how we've been dealing with her in the RV and, and now living full time. And, of course, there's Lily, our cat. Our cat is the same age as Cinder. We got them at the same time, so they grew up together. By the way, both of them travel very well in the truck. Uh, we do not leave the cat in the RV when we're traveling. She goes in a carrying case thing, a carrier for a cat, and rides in the back seat with Cinder whenever we're moving the RV. Uh, she does really well, doesn't mind traveling at all. Uh, with her, it's kind of like having, once we put the cat in here, the cat just kind of says, all right, this RV's mine now, and I'm letting you use it. And that's pretty much life with Lily. Um, Lily just kind of does what she wants to do in the house here, and uh, well, the RV, we call it the house. And uh, she's great. Uh, we have to keep her food up on the counter so some people say you you know you shouldn't have your cat up on the counter, but in an RV uh, when you, and you got a big dog, uh, Cinder would probably get into her food because some reason other people's food is much more interesting than her food. So that's the only drawback is we keep the uh, we found an area that is appropriate for Lily to use, and we keep her food and stuff up on the counter. She's doing great. Uh, we do, uh, uh, Sherry and I both do the best job we can to keep in the litter box changed out. We don't seem to have any odor problems or anything like that, but we also are pretty diligent about cleaning it. Um, as far as scratching all that, we clip her nails a lot, but we did not, we, we don't think it's right to cut off cat's uh, claws. So she's got her natural claws and she has had some minor issues but um, it hasn't been bad at all and we keep scratching posts around and toys for or things for her to climb that have that are made for cats and it seems to do the trick um, last but not least people ask me do you let your dog and cat sleep with you and yes that's the answer is yes some people say oh but that's why you want a king size bed when you got a chocolate lab that wants to sleep in the middle. Uh, it gets pretty crowded. 
So after a little pushing and shoving every night, we always find our right spot. And uh, our pets uh, do sleep with us. Um, we actually do laundry a lot, and we do change out our bedding quite a bit. Uh, we try to keep our animals very clean, and you always hear me joking about giving Cinder a chocolate bath because I use chocolate shampoo on her. <laughs> but it's cute, but it's kind of fun, and also gives me incentive to make sure that she's always shiny and clean. So that's the update on our animals. Animals are all doing great. Lily, she's a great little cat. Cinder is a content dog and very loving and she definitely is ready to move into warmer weather because we're not getting out as much as we used to because of the rain and uh, we also had daylight saving time so it's getting darker sooner so um, and I've been working a lot on videos and doing our shows and so I get stuck I'm not saying well, it's, I like it but it also keeps Cinder from getting attention from me too so there's that wealth thing I want is I sure could use more time and I'm looking forward to being retired here pretty soon and being given that gift of wealth which won't be more money but it's going to be more time so that's going to be quite the pay for me so anyway that's the update on the animals one inner other interesting note we got or comment that we got from one of our listeners and I, actually I think it was a viewer and they were asking about well, just general information of what it would be like to be a full timer because they're not full timing yet and then the first question they asked is like well, so where are you guys going where are you at now and I said well we're at the same place and, it, and I could tell by all the questions coming in is why aren't you traveling and I said, well, well, they didn't say it quite that way, but you can kind of tell, like, somebody thinks that full-timing in an RV, you're always traveling. And, and that's true with some folks, and it depends where they are in their life. And so a lot of folks are using an RV in many, many ways. And Sherry and I are exercising all of them. We've gone from camping RVs to uh, our mobile vacation home RV. And now we're living in our RV full time, but we still have nine to five jobs and they're pretty darn good jobs. And so we're wrapping up uh, the company I work with where I, I'm gonna retire from, I'll have a pension. And our life is gonna start changing, which probably means that our lifestyle with the RV is gonna change. But we're still a, a fairly young couple compared. And so Sherry will probably still want to work. And, and we're going to kind of have to as we're still saving money. We're totally out of debt now. And, and we're quite, and that's what we've been doing is getting prepared so we could actually do some traveling. But full-time RVing does not mean necessarily that you're traveling. And, and that's what we want to make sure people know that an RV is a very productive tool for many things uh, especially if you're trying to save money or prepare for retirement if you want to reduce your overhead and get down to practical living get rid of stuff stuff costs money stuff costs money to store stuff is stress the more stuff you have, the more responsibilities you have. As you taper off and get rid of that stuff, the more freedom you'll gain and the less stress you'll have. That's a fact. And so Sherry and I know that. So we've reduced this, this, the stuff. We still have practical stuff in storage because we might travel for a while and settle down and maybe be just snowbirds. Who knows? But we didn't want to give up everything and we don't want to rebuild because we won't have the income we have now later so we don't want to be buying furniture and TVs and practical things for a house or a rental or maybe we'll get a park model who knows or maybe we'll continue traveling or just staying in an RV we don't know we're gonna see how we feel 
And once you get in the reality of this lifestyle, you may change your mind or find a, a different niche for it that works good for you. Or if you're alone, maybe it's different. If you have a partner, maybe they feel different. Uh, I have my feelings about being a full-time RVer, and my wife has an interpretation of it. And we're totally different people, so we have to compromise and meet some of the things that she enjoys in life at the same time I do. So full-timing, the definition is all over the place. Um, but don't stereotype it of, hey, an R a full-time RVer is a traveler or, or nomad, and that's not true. Uh, and not to mention, some of them are using their RV for their career. Some folks have discovered, especially being in a uh, labor industry, of being a contract engineer or being a contract electrician or contact uh, lineman or a, a contractor. Or all Projects move all over the country. So those people have families and a lot of times they buy houses and they can't follow the good work. Well, they can now because they have RVs to do it with and the family can stay at home. I just met somebody last week who's a superintendent for a construction site over in Linwood, Washington over here, and he's all set up with his RV over here. His uh, wife and kids are in Idaho, and he uses a little puddle jumper or uh, flies over for a very reasonable amount to go home and see the family and kids uh, every weekend or every other weekend. And so he's making top dollar. He's making union pay providing for his family and his RVs turned out to be a resource that has worked good for them and their family and it is cost effective. So I guess I just wanted to address that is, is I've noticed some folks when we get our comments is like, why aren't you traveling? Well, I love to be traveling all the time, but it's different for everybody. And, and Sherry and I have a standard of living that we enjoy and, um, we just don't sit in the RV every day and play Nintendo. We like to do things and maybe visit a casino once in a while and have a really good dinner. And we kind of have some, you know, um, a champagne tastes in certain things. And that takes a different kind of income. And so um, we're not totally going to give all that up. So our standard of living is probably a little different than some other folks. So anyway, um that's kind of addressing another comment we got and i'm really appreciate that person uh, contacting us and, and thank you for your story and comments so i'm going to start wrapping up this show and want to thank you so much for listening uh, without you we're doesn't make any sense to do this and, and every week we see our, 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 our show growing and I just wanted to just from the bottom of my heart thank you for watching the show and I really look forward to hearing some feedback especially on the on the subject of wealth I know that some folks still don't kind of understand the podcast thing and I just want to remind you is if you have a smartphone all you have to do is download a free software. Um, I, the one I use is Podcast, Podcast Addict. You just download it, go into the search area, type in RV Talk Radio, make sure it's searching iTunes. We're in several other directories too. And pull us up and then every we try to make sure and have our show out every Friday. There could be situations where it could be up to 24 hours late and I apologize that's called being human now that I kind of told you a little bit what our lifestyle is like you can understand it's hard to get the shows out so uh, we pre-record usually on a Thursday night if we have an interview we got to try to get an interview between Friday and by the Wednesday so we can incorporate that interview with the show we'd love to do any show interviews with folks we can do them over the phone uh, we don't have the capability right now because we have weak internet of using uh, Skype but if you're not around us you can still do an interview with us uh, uh, spot the Scots and 
RV or TV. We both uh, we did on a cell phones, and it worked out great. And at local folks, we just uh, we meet really interesting people at the RV park here, and so when we meet interesting ones, we try to set up a chance to interview them. Some of them are kind of shy, and sometimes it's hard to hook up. And we've missed out on a couple really good interviews, but we just keep trying. I think uh, the big thing we want to try to talk about next week a little bit is understanding RV cost or cost of living and what it, uh, the misconceptions that just because we're in an RV you don't have the bills that you would have when you own a house or apartment. Well, you still have those kind of things and we want to talk about those, but um, once again, it's, it, it depends on your lifestyle. So we'll get into that a lot more. But once again, thank you so much for listening to our show. Don't forget, our contest is still going. If you want to have the chance to win a free RV lock, all you have to do is go to Facebook, find our community page for RV Talk Radio, and ask to join. And, and we'll, we'll, once we get you joined, you'll see a little, you'll get an indicator. Go on there and just say, I want to be part of the of the contest. We also will want to hear your stories. Leave posts there. That's what it's for. We, it's a community. So tell us where you're at, what you're driving. Um, start discussions. We love it. Uh, that's what the, the whole group thing's for. So it's brand new and it's growing. I think there's probably 40 or 50 members right now. We just started it, and it was the first, actually, community we've done for RV Talk Radio. And everybody that's on there, with the exception of family and friends, are eligible to win the RV lock. So if you joined the community before the contest, you're still eligible. You're going to be in the, in the drawing on the 11th. And on the next show, we will announce who the next winner is. And we just, you know, we got... We just got confirmation that our last one that we gave away is, is uh, has been received, and they're tickled pink about it. So, and and those people actually became really good friends of ours, and we appreciate how um, getting to know them. And um, in fact, that's the same couple that kind of got me talking about what our what is a full time RVer. So, once again, thanks for watching the show from RV Talk Radio and RV Travel Buddy. Our saying here is, what are you waiting for? Please be safe. Please get a chance to tell us about your RV. And please be listening and, and stay tuned for next week's show. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs>